Good afternoon and welcome to the Law and Crime Network. I'm Angelica Spanos. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have three live trials that we are following today and we will bring you the latest information on those to you live straight out of the courtrooms here on the Law and Crime Network. All right, so we heard from the police officer that pulled over Jones. We heard from a toxicologist and then we just heard from a neuropharmacologist. So all these sort of expert people here. Um, I want to bring on our guest today, Judge Ashley Wilcott. Uh, Judge Ashley, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, so when we listened to those experts, and one of the things they all mentioned in this was the schizophrenia aspect of this. How does that play Ladies into the mind. insanity defense that the defense is uh, claiming here? So listen, from my perspective as a judge here in cases is yes, you want the jury to hear from the experts, but the important thing to recognize and remember, schizophrenia in and of itself does not mean there's an insanity defense. It does not necessarily mean that he did not know right from wrong. They still have to connect those dots to say as a result of the schizophrenia or because of the schizophrenia, he was not able to distinguish right from wrong. So that's step one, but they still have to connect all the dots. Right, and they also talked about the spice, which was the drug that was in his car. Why bring that into it? Well, because spice, you know, you read all these stories and you see on the news, they can do wild things to people, for lack of a better description. And people claim that when they take spice, not only do they act irrationally and do things they shouldn't, they don't necessarily remember they did it. So I think the argument's going to be on spice, he could not distinguish right from wrong. All right, Judge Ashley Wilcott, thanks for joining us. We got to take a quick break. Stay with us here on the Law and Crime Network. All right, so again, that was Crystal Ballantyne, one of Jones's former girlfriends, and she really describes how he doted on his children and was very strict. Um, Judge Ashley, I want to ask you, what's your initial reaction to hearing her? She's pretty compelling. She is pretty compelling, but here's the issue I have with not just this case, but any case when somebody's injured or killed children, and that is, listen, it's one thing to be a good parent and then snap and kill your children. That is different from meaning that it's insanity. So maybe that's what happened. So he was doting on his children. That happens, and then you see people kill their children. So that's very different than saying he was necessarily insane because he did that. All right, thank you. I'm told that Timothy Jones Sr. is on the stand right now. We wanna take you there live. So let's take a listen at that. All right, so again, that was Timothy Jones Sr. That's the defendant's father. This is the first time we've heard from him. He's been in the courtroom every day watching this trial, but first time we are hearing from him. Real quick, Judge Ashley, we only got a minute or so here. What's your reaction to listening to him, his father? I mean, it's it's just kind of sad to me, and I just think he kind of said, look, we tried to say this, we tried to do this, and I, I don't think that there's really a lot of import that he is sharing with us or giving to the jury that they can hang their hat on. So I don't feel like it's very compelling testimony. That's just my takeaway. And he mentioned how he had been talking to Jones and how they had made a plan to come visit and those sort of details. Does that help at all? Does that do anything? Well, you know, again, I don't think so. Does it give information about, yes, they've been talking, yes, there were plans? I think that goes directly to he did know what he was doing, he had presence of mind. Absent that, I don't think there's a lot to be gleaned from this testimony. And one of the things that stuck out to me is he said that he worried his mental issues maybe did stem from his mother. Uh, any thoughts on that? In terms of, you know, no, I, I don't think it makes a big significant difference because, again, I think mental health issues are a concern. They can be treated. It does not necessarily mean that he did not know right from wrong, was insane at the time that he killed the children. All right, Judge Ashley Wilcott, thank you so much. We have to take a quick break. Stay with us here on the Law and Crime Network. All right, so again, that is live in South Carolina with Timothy Jones Sr. on the stand there. Um, Judge Ashley is bringing his father in relevant here, showing these family photos. You're taking a look at them right now. He, they have those up on the projection. What, what's the point of this? Well, again, I struggle with the relevance of the point. I mean, it shows he had a relationship with the children, and there's already been testimony by some accounts that he's been a good father, but that doesn't go to whether or not he was capable of doing this or did do it and his motive. So I just don't, I, I don't think this, this testimony is very impactful at this point. Maybe he'll have a lot more to say. I don't know. And I guess you're on the right track because I'm told that there was just a relevance objection in the courtroom there. So <laughs> I guess everyone's thinking the same thing. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I absolutely would make that objection because, again, what is the relevance to it? I'll be curious to see how the judge rules on it in this case.
All right, well, let's continue watching live there again in uh, South Carolina with Jones Sr. on the stand. So again, that is live inside the courtroom in South Carolina. We have Jones Sr. on the stand. Judge Ashley, do you still stick with your first thought that really none of this and what they're bringing up, these families' photos, the fact that they pray together, saying grace, do you still think this really isn't relevant? Well, I don't think it's relevant in terms of legally, perhaps it shouldn't be admissible, but I am going to say this. To me, what this shows the jury is, listen, this is a man that had it together, that had the ability to think straight, to do these things, to say the prayer, to parent his children, to play with them. And so to me, it certainly shows, well, listen, even if he's been diagnosed as schizophrenic, he certainly had the ability, and here's proof in pictures, that he can parent his children. All right, we're going to go back live into that courtroom to continue listening. All right, so we're into the cross-examination of Timothy Jones Sr., that is the defendant's father. Um, Judge Ashley, bringing you into this, where are they going with this? What do you make of what you've heard so far? Listen, you know, I don't know where they're going with this. I think the benefit to the defense of this witness that they've called is that it might get the sympathy of the jury to say he's been through all kinds of things. He's had all kinds of bad things happen to him. He's schizophrenic. He has a mental health diagnosis. What I don't get, though, to me, this is the kind of testimony that as a judge, I would really hear in a sentencing hearing about mitigating or aggravating circumstances. So I don't really yet see how this piece fits into a trial with the defense trying to show reasonable doubt. And they keep asking him if he still loves his son, if he, you know, ever expected something like this. And one of the things that I thought was kind of strange is his father said that it's bad DNA. I guess he's sick. Um, little kind of weird comment, no? Yeah, no, I agree with you. It was a weird comment. Not only that, but he also said, my son wouldn't do this. Not my son wouldn't do this, he must be sick, or it's almost like in his mind he separated the two, right? He says, my son wouldn't do this, no way. And then, well, bad DNA must, be, uh, it's wild to me, it's almost like he's disowned this person who killed the kids and said, my son would never do that. It, it's an odd, kind of weird testimony. I still don't know where we're going with this. All right, we will continue to follow that. We have to take a quick break. Stay with us here on the Law & Crime Network. All right, so that is the live cross-examination of Timothy Jones Sr., that is the defendant's father. We've heard some interesting things that he said in the past few minutes here. Judge Ashley, let me bring you into this. What are your final thoughts on the defendant's father and what he's been going through for the last few minutes here? So first of all, he sounds very credible because I think both of us are a little incredulous some of the things he's saying. So he sounds like he's just out there being honest. A couple things I wanted to point out. I think if you were to ask, is this a better prosecution or defense witness at this moment, I think the prosecution's scoring lots of points and here's why. Because they just got him to testify, yes, I taught him right from wrong. So, okay, then it's clear this defendant at least throughout his life was taught right from wrong and that he felt like, listen, I think he's gonna go off the edge or fall off the edge like um, parents did. Well, again, falling off the edge is not the same as the legal definition of insanity. So I don't think this is a great defense witness. They also talked about his younger years and how he had never seen anything out of the ordinary from him. He even said that he was so smart that he scared him. Um, a couple other little things like that stuck out to me. Where Does this help? Well, I think it helps the prosecution because to me it indicates that, again, this was somebody who's described as a capable father, a smart individual, knew right from wrong, was functioning as, a, as an average adult, right? And then all of a sudden he fell off the edge. I, I guess either can use it to their advantage, but still we haven't seen the evidence at this point in time, I believe, to say at the time he killed all five of his children, he knew right from wrong. Uh, excuse me, that he didn't know right from wrong. All right, Judge Ashley, thank you so much. We have to take a break. We will be back afterwards here on the Law & Crime Network. Stay with us.